Hello, all you cool cats and kittens, and welcome back to another episode of Finger Guns with Tony, Dave, and James. I am your dynamic co-host, Dave Baldwin, and here I am with a static Jimmy and, and just Tony B. All right. And how are we doing tonight? I know we had some uh, some technical issues um, that I hope we have resolved. Yeah, one day we will be rid of all of our technical problems, but for now, we continue our struggle forward, but it's okay. Everyone's here. We're all mic'd up. Everyone can hear everyone. That's... Fuck, we got half the battle right there. Who cares if the rest of the episode we talk about tonight? We can just do this. It's fine. That's true. That's what the that people can't pay to movie. see, right? We just need that sponsorship money, and then we can have better setups. Fucking A. We can, like... We can, we can afford, like, real... So I can afford a, a Zoom Pro membership. <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. Someone, right? someone, pay me enough that I can buy a Zoom Pro membership. All I need, there's a sale right now. All I need is twenty dollars a month for the low, low price of twenty. For the low, low price of a coffee a day, you can afford <laughs> to save a starving podcast host. <laughs> Jesus, they're really going they're hilarious. <laughs> What the fuck? You are hilarious. Have you guys seen Bodies, Bodies, Bodies yet? We have I not. Have not. Rachel Sennett oh. is a podcast host. <laughs> and they keep ragging on her the whole movie of her podcast. Oh, man. I want to see it so I, bad. Oh, Especially man. after Shiva, baby. So fuck me. I want to see that movie so bad. Yes. Fucking definitely. I'm all over that movie. I should actually go see that this weekend instead of fucking Bullet Train, but you know. Yes, yes, you should. You should. Nah, Melissa wouldn't do that. She's got to do Bullet Bullet Train. You gotta, you gotta do the action. She's not gonna like some fucking art house horror movie. It's not even a bodies, horror movie. Bodies, bodies. It's not really? even a horror no, movie, a, man. It's a fucking horror movie. No, it's a murder mystery. Ooh, a who done it? A who done it? It's fucking. Does wow. fucking Daniel Craig show up with like, his foghorn no. leghorn going on? No, no, no. We'll talk about that one later. All right. But uh, oh, no, fuck. it's uh, I know they promoted it as a slasher, but it's more of person person dies and they have to figure out who killed them. Oh, and they all start like turning on each other. Oh, and it's it's like a murder mystery satire, Gen, <laughs> Gen Z satire. So are we so are we also saying that maybe the marketing is a little bit misguided on this one and that I would agree yeah yeah all right because that's not Definitely. what I got from Definitely. those trailers at all yeah well the tra- the trailer was basically a full out horror movie yeah, yeah. it's not that's yeah. not what it is all right yeah yeah and this like is, it has this the is elements but it's hate. more of a murder mystery yeah this is why people hate a twenty four and their fucking trailers because they don't know how to cut a proper trailer mm. they know how to cut a proper trailer Tony they just how their many marketing. A24 movies are misled because of their trailers? That doesn't, that doesn't mean they don't know how to cut a trailer, Tony. All right, buddy. You're getting like, you're getting you're getting you're getting pretty hot about this topic. And I'm just laughing this is, over here. There's a real hot button issue for Dave. <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves the hot button for Tony. They just wrote an article. There was just an article in I don't know where oh, it wasn't on deadline in variety. Oh my god, where was it? IndieWire? Maybe I don't know. It was sure. a big, it was a, it was a it was a trade, and they were talking about the cult of A twenty four and how it's become more of a cult thing now. And like people like they don't they don't like the genre. Like A twenty four is its own genre now. Right. Yeah. 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 So when you say they they know how to cut a trailer, Tony, because they know how to get people in the in the theater. Right. They just happen to mislead you quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just take your A twenty fours with a grain of salt. Anyway, hey, yo, any hoozles. <sighs> but you didn't come here to listen to us bitch about A twenty four. That's not the uh, the episode we have today. Um, bitch about? I, I'm just writing like a day of Christmas lift. A twenty four t shirt. Oh my god, I would love an A24 t-shirt. Extra large, please. Yes, naturally. It's on my list if I get your name this year anyway. (laughs) But, um... 
it's the end of August, which means Fucking a. that September is almost here, which is the fav- our favorite time of the year. But before we get into all of that, we need to close out Fantasia. Oh, finally. <laughs> the festival that felt like it never ended. Hey, I'm good with it, man. I'm good with it. I loved it. Yeah. So I finally watched Fast and Feel Love yes yesterday and it was yes bananas oh good bananas i was hoping i was hoping it would be bananas it's like it's a satire it's a coming of age film it's a parody it's oh my god a romance it's a comedy it's a drama it's like it has so many different tonal shifts huh it's Insane. There's like a full on parody of Parasite in the middle. Wow. <laughs> and like, it's very, like, he taught, it's, uh, he breaks the fourth wall multiple times. He randomly calls out very pop culture things. Like, he's like, right. this is darker than the DC universe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. But uh, yeah, basically, the gist of it is um, <clears throat> this couple meets in high school and uh, she doesn't really have any ambitions for what she wants to do next. And all he wants to do is become a stacking cup champion. And uh, then it fast. Cause why forward- not? Cause why sure. not? And then it fast forwards to um, them in their third, like when they're about 30 ish. Yeah. And he is trying to become the champion. Like he's on the cusp of being the champion and um, she wants to have a baby and you know, hilarity ensues right <laughs> um but yeah it's really well done really well edited and it's it's just a lot of fun and i just sat there and i just couldn't i was just like what is i was just bewildered nice. the whole time and i i just i really really liked it i thought i had a blast and i wish i didn't leave it for so long i wish we talked about it. i wish we all like sat together and watched this one like what three weeks ago like this one, this one deserves to find an audience. It's right. wacky. Nice. Yeah. So add it to the list. Add it to so the list. To the yeah. list. Yeah. All right. All add right. it to the right list. On. And with that, unless you guys have anything else to say. Nope. We will put Fantasia to bed for now. Thank you. That book <laughs> is closed. It is back on the shelf. Till hopefully Until next, next year. year. Until next. What? Uh, well, hold on. Hold on. What? What about uh, what was your favorite of the festival? Oh, yeah, you ever think of that? Like, what no. is uh, name out name out uh, name out my fave? Yeah, name out your fave. Uh, da, 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 da. Anyone got a fave off the top? I got a fave, and yeah. it's called Special Delivery. All right, that's fair. That's a good one. Uh, that was a fucking fantastic one. I really enjoyed that one. I, think... I got a second favorite. Sure. What's your second favorite? Yeah, go. Second favorite, The Killer. Okay. Yeah. That was also a banger. Mine, was a banger. Is, mine I think, is Next Exit. Next Exit. Okay. okay. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I would, I'd say Next Exit or Fast and Feel Love. All right. Oh, fuck. Okay. 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 Those are, those are some titles. Yeah, that's good. So I hope they all find an audience. Yes. Well, please. Fuck, I'm pissed. Yes. I'm fucking pissed. I missed. Uh, I missed that uh, fast and feel love. Yeah. We'll catch Damn. it, Tony. We'll catch you it. It's on the it. list. Yeah. I'm we'll sure seek it out. Catch it. We'll seek it out. That's a fucking lutely. So good. That's good. I'm happy. It's closed. We're finished. And now people who don't want to hear us talk about Fantasia anymore don't have to hear us talk about Fantasia Fest anymore. Thank Christ. Not that not that we've heard that it's been bad, but you know. Fantasia is always a good time. It is a festival <laughs> of festivals. True. That's In my opinion. Tony. <laughs> no, no, no not I'm, to taking, Tony. I'm taking it. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back for taking Fantasia. It back. <laughs> you can't just decide that you're taking it back for Fantasia. You can try. You know we, what? I'm going we had to. a we had a good time. It may not sound like we had a good time, but we had a great time. No, and we I did. look forward to yeah. doing it again. One hundred percent. Yeah, there's we jest, but yeah, no, it was a great time, and a lot of movies. We love Fantasia. And, yeah, 
mucho appreciado as always for all of the all of the production companies providing us films to review and Fantasia themselves. It was great. It was a great time. Thank you so much. Now. Yeah. On to best man worst, which oh, we haven't done in quite some time. The segment is back. It oh my returned. god. Tony, tell me your best. Yeah. So this is gonna be a twofer. I'm not gonna have a meh because oh. this is gonna be a twofer. You've had you've had a me week, eh? You've just been watching a lot right. of bangers. Buddy, honestly, I was very taken aback by both films that I'm about to bring up. Okay. Okay. The okay. first here. The first one is a little film from a director that we all know and love. Yeah. Um he directed such films as Parasite. Bong! June. Oh yeah, you Hello. got it. There we go. That was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, we got that wasn't even planned. Okay, okay. That wasn't did, even planned. I like did, that. Did you did you re up your subscription to the, the bong hive? Yeah, man. I definitely did because this fucking movie fucking fox oh, hard. Oh yeah. Which one, buddy? I am talking about memories of murder. Yeah, oh, buddy. You finally saw it. Good for you. I saw this in Putacana on my vacation and i have not stopped thinking about it it's a good one it's incredible this movie is just something else man the the story holy shit yeah and the fucking ending like i'm not going to spoil it for anybody because everyone needs to seek this out but just like the last like two minutes yeah she bleeds just two (sighs) yeah it's bleak as shit it's not at all what you're and expecting it to be either. No, not at all. And like the fucking partner who just likes to fucking drop kick people, like oh yeah, that part where all he right. like yeah, yeah, yeah. jumps off. He literally just yeah. like jumps up and like swan kicks the fucking guy yeah. in the chest. Yeah, that part's that like, part's what great. The hell? Yeah. Wild. Like, and the act the acting is so good. Like I man, the way that the way that man tells the story is just incredible. Yeah. Seek it out immediately. I'm back on the Criterion train. Heck yeah, along. buddy. For fucking December 31st. I'm going to get there, man. You like, Welcome. Welcome to the party. <laughs> I've hit the 2010s, so I think I'm like nine or I'm on like week nine oh. or ten. But oh. like, I don't, I don't want to spoil how far ahead I am. Man, Dave, I don't even think Dave left the first, the first tier. He didn't get out of the 20s? Have you, Dave? <laughs> No, I'm. I'm think he's still. He's still trucking in the twenties. He's still in the. He's still in the twenties to thirties. Still trying to get out of there. I'll get there. Don't worry, boys. Don't worry. Yeah, the, Dave's gonna. Dave's gonna sit there in like December and watch six a day. <laughs> yeah, he's going to. He's going to. And man, man, he's gonna hate his life. I'm gonna but, pull it uh, off. Don't worry. It's guys. gonna happen. Okay. He's gonna come I'm in from absolutely. behind. And he's the only one that's yeah. gonna finish. And somehow you and I are I gonna like you. waffle right at the end or something. Yeah, exactly. We're just gonna fuck it up right at the end. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I'm okay, buddy. It, okay, homie. I'm proud okay, of you for buddy. finally but seeing memories yes. of murder. Big shadows. I'm also buying it on my next Criterion sale. I wasn't going to, but the more I think about this fucking movie, I'm totally doing it. Oh, you should have just bought it blind, buddy. Yeah. Should have. Should have. Worth it. Uh, definitely. But the second movie I want to follow it up with is a uh, movie that is going to become near dear in my heart just because of the title. It is called Vengeance. Oh, nice. Oh, the movie we were going to cover a few weeks ago yeah. before we found out that it was a uh, limited At release in Canada. Literally one theater. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid bastards. But I got it on uh, premium VOD. Nice. Oh, you fancy, and, huh? You paid yeah, for it. Yeah, definitely fancy. Paid for it. Paid for it. Um, let me tell you something. I'm going to be completely honest. If you don't like uh, BJ Novak's writing, you're probably going to hate this movie. I don't because he is it is so self-indulged so like at one point it felt like verbal masturbation because of what he was saying I'm just like come on man like you're 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 getting too full of yourself right now the movie is still amazing despite that I think he's a very good writer I think he has a future in uh in writing for sure there is uh no I'm not even gonna spoil it there's 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 a special cameo at the beginning and I didn't realize who that person was until about halfway through the movie (laughs) (laughs) 
I was like, oh, I was like, oh, wait, was that? And Melissa's like, that's what I was trying to tell you the whole time. And you didn't want to listen to me. You just said, oh, that's the that's the guy from the office. That wasn't who I was referring to. Wild. Yeah. See it, see it immediately. Like, I will. And, uh, and another, and another thing, another movie that just like an, an ending that just fucking hits you like a shotgun blast. And there's like a, there's like a little like a monologue at the end about regrets and it just leaves a lasting impression on your mind all right for sure all right high price it's on the list high for price. sure i high definitely price. want to see it once you know well now i guess i can james you got that premium vod money yeah you know it <laughs> i'm uh i'm definitely gonna i'm gonna put my money down there for it you know Do support it. small cinemas and cineplex decided to be a bunch of jackasses and only put it at one fucking theater yeah, yeah. Had a moderate release in the states, and yeah. it only was released in one theater here. Yeah, not even, and Dog you know shit, what? Man. Like, you put it in the one theater, but like, what did they not even give the opportunities for any of the small guys to pick it up? Like, it wasn't at the Playhouse, it wasn't at Princess, it wasn't at. Well, it might still come out. It might at now, the but like, now. yeah, but like, it's already on PVOD. But it's just like you know, like fuck Cineplex. If you're gonna hold a monopoly in the market, at least if you're gonna only gonna put it in one theater, fucking. Go fuck yourselves and like give it to some other folks. I don't know. I I shit on Cineplex, but also fuck Cineplex. Bet they're happy they didn't uh, go through with that Cineworld uh, bio. Oh yeah, that was wild, eh? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I saw them filing for bankruptcy, and I was just like, oh shit. I'm glad they didn't. Uh... And they were the ones suing Cineplex because Cineplex pulled out. I think wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we know why they pulled out. <laughs> they had to look at those finances and. Wasn't good. <laughs> no bueno. Poor no guys. bueno. Poor, poor guys. Yeah. James, your best. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna talk about sort of a rabbit hole that I fell down, and then I'm just gonna give a cu- couple other quick hits because it's been a while since we've done one of these, and I have I've watched a lot of bangers in a row. Uh, it was really a struggle for me to put something in the met and the worst. So I got there. It's just it was hard. Um. So as I've kind of mentioned over time, I've been rewatching all of Tarantino stuff um, because it's come up probably in a few best man worse before Uh, I rewatched Django Unchained and I forgot how good that fucking movie is. It's a good one. It's It's fucking so good. I fucking love that one. It's so much fun and just a great time all the way through, even though like there's some horrific shit happening. Um, definitely but it's just like so well and acted and so language so well written yeah. that it just like yeah it just it feels right even though yeah there's some real fucked up shit going on but like it's a movie i don't it is what it is i'm not going to get into the entire conversation about how that script is written and how many uses of a particular word happen in a movie but it's a lot um definitely it, def- definitely a lot man yeah Fuck. i think it's one of his worst edited movies because it was right after right Sally, after Sally died. died. Yeah. yeah. And it was his new guy came in and he doesn't quite jive with the writing and the tone. And then I hate Hateful Eight. I'm not a fan of that movie at all. Well, that's next on my list to watch and see how I like it. But I feel like he finally... Um, he finally coalesced with Tarantino out, for... Yeah once upon a time in hollywood i was reading he was the second like he was the assistant editor he he worked with sally oh okay um but not obviously like not the same relationship he was just the assistant editor or associate editor whatever the fuck they're called um and then yeah that's why he took over like the full editing spot because he already kind of knew but yeah i feel like it's it's different being like the the main front editor versus you know cutting some random extra shit or whatever fred uh, fred yeah. raskin yeah fred raskin yeah he was he worked under sally so i think it, it was a it ended up being a good fit but you're right yeah the first one it, it it didn't quite it wasn't there yet yeah like it's kind of like i like it i like it i don't love it as much as i used to yeah i just feel like it's it's very episodic yeah, and there's also, yeah, there's those bits where it's just like, and then they wandered the wilderness for a while, and you're like, okay. It also goes yeah. on for a little bit too long, but 
I'm nitpicking yeah. on that. Anyway, what ended up happening was I this is the first time I kind of paid attention to the credits a little bit more, and I noticed uh, it said with made with like um, love and support from Franco Nero, and I was like, wait the fuck so i started digging a little bit into it and i was like oh okay so that's where the whole django thing was because i knew there was a movie based on django but i didn't realize that franco nero was the guy who played django and he's also in django unchained which is yeah, was hilarious gonna, was to say, me he has he yeah. has a scene in it for sure yeah and he's and he's like he spells it, he's like i know how to spell it yes <laughs> i know it's like that yeah. knowing, it's, knowing the, wink. it's the wink and the nod yeah um so then i was like you know what i'm gonna watch django so then i threw on django next um, and that was a wild ride. It's probably one of the most loosey goosey spaghetti westerns I've ever seen. That it's like really fucking bare bones, uh, but also way the fuck over the top. Um, no blood though. Like it, I can see sort of the inspirations that Tarantino was using from that beyond the song, which is an all timer song, by the way um Django, Django, definitely, it's Fucking incredible, banger, yeah, and it plays multiple times. But like the, most of the movie was just kind of like, hey, it's fine, and like it's a it's a western. A guy goes into a town, he has to uh, he has to save uh, a, a woman. He gets in the middle of two fighting opposing parties, bandits. Yeah, well, one was bandits, the other one was like part of like the uh, the army. Because, you know, Spaghetti Western's always got to be somewhere around the Civil War. Always, always. Come on now. And then, so I was watching that, and it was fine. It, like, the last shot of that movie is an all-timer. It's almost worth it to sit there for the entire... It's only an hour and a half, which goes by quick. But, like, the last shot of that movie and, like, the final shootout is chef's kiss. It's incredible. Um but that led me down a further rabbit hole because I was reading, oh, Django's like loosely based on Yojimbo from Akira Kurosawa. So oh, shit. I threw that on next and I was like, holy fuck. fuck. OK, like that was a crazy trip. That's my first Akira Kurosawa movie I've ever seen. I have another one coming up on my Criterion Challenge. I got to watch Seven Samurai, but I'm not there yet. So I started with Yojimbo. Seven Samurai? Yet? I've never seen Seven Samurai. Didn't we have a conversation about Seven Samurai? Yeah, I've never seen it. Oh, um, Yo Jimbo's better. I really dug Yo Jimbo. I thought it was a lot of fun. It had a weird tone issue at times because it was trying to balance yeah. like these lighthearted comedic moments with like some pretty fucked up violence <laughs> of like a lot and like so I started reading like factoids around that and like how like there's the entire like cantina scene in fucking Star Wars is based off a scene from Yojimbo. And I was like, oh, shit, there it is. Uh, yeah, OK. I love it. Um, And then I was reading about, you know, how Sergio Leone, the, the king of the spaghetti western, in my opinion, uh, basically like cribbed off of Akira Kurosawa completely from Yojimbo and wrote um, A Fistful of Dollars. <laughs> And then Akira Kurosawa, well, I think Toho in Japan sued them because it's like, uh, guy, like the fuck. And so now Akira <laughs> Kurosawa has a co-writing credit on a fistful of dollars, which I think is like the greatest thing ever. Um, and I actually, I actually knew that. I didn't know the story behind it, but like that's actually hilarious. So watching Yojimbo and then a fistful of dollars back to back. Uh, yeah, it's the same fucking movie. <laughs> There's like moments, full dialogue, full scenes that are just like exactly copied <laughs> between the two. And I'm like, you like, you really? <laughs> but you know what? All that aside, I liked Yojimbo a lot. I liked A Fistful of Dollars a lot, mainly because Sergio Leone, Clint Eastwood, and then you have Ennio doing the score, and it's perfect. perfect. It's perfect. Um, Chef's Kiss. Um, Yojimbo I liked, Fistful of Dollars I liked, Django, eh, it was fine, and Django Unchained I liked. So overall, that's my rabbit hole of Django and how I followed it back to its very source and also then watched the thing that cribbed off it the most. Um, but it was also interesting, just my last little point, because I watched it in a weird order of like Django, Yojimbo, and then A Fistful of Dollars, there's weird things because Django is loosely based off Yojimbo, but it's also loosely based off a fistful of dollars because there's scenes in Django that are ripped straight from a fistful of dollars and I'm just like I so you kind of use like it, it's almost like a copy of a copy of a copy 
so that like by the time you hit the third copy it's kind of faded a little you kind of see where it is but like it's a little it's a little fuzzy to see the full influence but there's it's weird how that those three films ended up spawning from each other anyway long story long sorry so oh, what okay. you're saying is yeah. it's a hell of a trilogy <laughs> Well, it's a hell of watching the same movie three times. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it, though. Like, if you've never done, like, if you've seen them each individually over your life, do it. Do once. So, like, watch all three back to back, and you'll see exactly what I mean. And go, like, Yo Jimbo, Fistful of Dollars, and then Django, and just, just, just watch as things continually get weirdly copied and copied as it goes through. Yeah. I'm totally down. I'm I'm probably it's fun. gonna do it, James. It's a you, lot of you fun. You sold me on it after t- after after Tiff, obviously. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, right yeah. Now. You have other priorities, <laughs> but I get it. But yeah, add that as yeah. like a little list of like, you know what? You got a free yeah. Saturday. You got nothing to do. There's your trilogy. Fucking let's do it. Dave, up. oh, you guys are gonna be upset. Why? Or you guys already were upset. But you know, good fellas. <sighs> fuck you. You fuck. <clears throat> I you had piece to, of shit. You ruined I the traditions. I'm sorry. Like, go take a swan dive off your deck. I also can I as a brief as a brief insider baseball thing here, and <laughs> if you follow us on Twitter, you may have seen it. But like from Dave's interaction, saying that he was at the playhouse to me giving him shit with another good fella's gif of like why the fuck was I invited to Tony using another good fella's gif and then the playhouse cinema coming in and just liking all of it i was like this is <laughs> oh the playhouse liked it yeah oh yeah. my yeah. god that's amazing i love that i didn't yeah. see yeah. that at all that's awesome yeah we we tight with we we are tight with a theater yeah. that's that's how good our relationship has become with the playhouse <laughs> yeah i am not surprised in the slightest but anyway, i got to go on I had the opportunity and I took it to see Goodfellas in 35 millimeter and uh, you know, it looked amazing. Yeah. But it just like, it was, there were certain, like there was only one jump, but, and it looked like crap in certain sections. Sure. Like you could see all the lines and the, the, the burn marks and stuff, but sounded great. Looked great. And of course it's Goodfellas. So it's, it is great. It's amazing. Yeah. Like there's like, I don't need to tell anybody like I know it's a film bro movie, but like it's a film bro movie for a reason. Yeah. And like, it's, it's just really like Ray. We lost Ray Liotta too soon. Yeah. We Agreed. lost him too soon. And Paul but Sorvino. I am Paul and Sorvino. Paul Sorvino yeah. He was really good in it. Polly Walnut shows up. Yeah. For a bit. Yeah. R.I.P. So De, Niro, of... De Niro at the height of De Niro. Yeah. Like that bit with uh Sunshine of Your Love. Like Yeah. Like when they when they put when they put De Niro to rest, they just need to play that scene. Yeah. Like that's that's De Niro. <laughs> yeah. Pesci. Joe Pesci. Pesci yeah. all timer. Lorraine Bracco. Yeah. Lorraine. Oh, yeah. Really God. fucking good in it. Like it's it's unreal and just like the the Copa the Copacabana scene. Oh yeah. Like just what he's doing with the camera. Yeah. The editing, the music. Like it's yeah. just so so good. Yeah. And I like I I love it. I love it. No notes. So I'm glad I got no notes. I'm glad I got to see it. That's well, awesome. Fuck That's you. awesome. And I'm glad the print was the, I'm glad the print looked good enough and it wasn't too in too rough shape. So no, it's good to hear. It wasn't in too rough shape. So I'm happy. I'm happy I got I'm happy we got to see or yeah. I got to see it. It wasn't it wasn't like a dog shit copy like Pulp Fiction Not was. Well, well, even though that it one was, was okay. Little, I think Pulp Fiction was a little more rough. Yeah. But yeah. Goodfellas still looked really good. And it wasn't uh, it wasn't the pristine the pristine new print of the conversation that we got. Or even dead. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, or Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, but it's it's. I think it's. I think it's cooler to see like an actual print from back in the day. Agreed. Right. Like that. Yeah. Like there's some. Someone watched this. Like there's some nostalgia knowing yeah. it's a thirty year old. Like you're watching a thirty year old movie and the print yeah. is thirty years old. Yeah. Yeah, right? that's very cool. 
and they're doing Terminator 2 this week, which I wish I could have gone to go see. Same. And I believe they're doing League of Their Own next, next week. Next week, yep. By the time this is this uh, goes live, League of Their Own should be on. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I, if, if, any, if any of our fans are Hamilton area, hit up the Playhouse, man. Do yourself a favor. If you've been sk- sitting on it being like, oh, I don't know, it's just like a random one-off theater. No, it's like one of the best locals in the game, man. They're crushing it. They get film prints all the time and they host really cool events. So check them out and also support local cinemas because, yeah, fuck Cineplex, et cetera. They're never going to sponsor us. And you know what? I don't care. (laughs) And the last thing I want to say about Goodfellas, the Layla piano montage. Oh, yeah. Fuck, now I just want to watch oh, Goodfellas. Shit. Yeah, I was just like, why are we, why, what the fuck are we doing? Can we just, yeah. just, just, just stop production and just fucking watch Goodfellas? Put it right on. Now. Yeah. Put her on. Jesus. Just that opening line, man. Like, fuck. Once you got that opening line in, you're just like, you're hooked. You're like, yeah. fuck. Like, that's one of the greatest lines in all of cinema. Right fucking there, man. The ending was even, like, his last lines was even better. Yeah. Yeah. Living his life as a schnook. (laughs) As a schnook. Yeah. (laughs) So what was it? It was ketchup ketchup and egg noodles. Yeah, he ordered spaghetti with spaghetti with marinara and you got uh, ketchup with egg noodles. Yeah. Or egg noodles and ketchup. Egg noodles and ketchup, yeah. And then there's another I've never seen it, but there's a Steve Martin movie. I think it's called My Blue Heaven. Sure. The one with Rick Moranis. It has Rick Moranis in it, yeah. But that is apparently a uh that one's a play on the story of Henry, like after. Like it's based uh, the post. Of, yeah. It's based off of Henry Hill like being in witness protection. Like huh. the, like it's based That's on amazing. That. <laughs> so spiritual right. sequel. Yeah, spiritual sequel. So I want to see that. Nice. Mostly because I've been watching uh, Only Murders in the Building and Steve Martin is quite good. Yeah. I fucking love that show. That show has no business being as good as it is. It's true. It's true. Did you watch it yet, Jimmy? No, I haven't. Okay, so Tony's going to go watch Goodfellas and you're going to go watch Only Murders Yeah, in the that's building. fine. That's fine. I can do that. Fucking rock on. Yeah. And it's viciously violent. <laughs> It's like Scorsese movie violence. Oh fuck! Okay. Well, yeah. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Were you, what? I don't know what the fuck you were expecting. Like, Jesus well, Christ. <laughs> well, I was, I was expecting like tee hee. <laughs> it's not tee hee. <laughs> like it's who, it's the, hell, who the hell goes into Goodfellas oh. uh, expecting tea? No, I'm talking about oh, only, murders. only murders. Okay. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. No. Vis- vis- vicious man. Seriously. The the, the amount right. of blood All in right. that fucking show. All right. Man, if All you right. walk into Goodfellas thinking tee hee, yeah. you get like 30 <laughs> seconds into that movie and know it's not yeah. tee hee. Holy fuck. Yeah. Holy, Holy Bats fuck, is yeah. getting like stabbed with a kitchen knife that he stole from his mother's house. Yeah. Yeah. We'll borrow this. <laughs> oh, man. Enough about Goodfellas. I think we could go on and on about Goodfellas. Tony. Did you have a meh or did you, you're skipping it? Nah, we're going to skip it. Uh, right. You don't want to hear me fucking talk about movies. Come on now. Let's go to James. Okay. Okay. I can do a meh. Um, thanks to the wonderful folks at Shudder. Uh, they sent us a link for a little title called The Innocence, oh, which shit. is out now on Shudder, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Well, the embargo's up anyway, so I can talk about it as well. I don't fucking care. But it is coming to Shutter, <laughs> or it out. is on Shutter. I think um, it came out on Shutter recently. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Um, yeah, so I watched The Innocents, and uh, man, fuck Norwegian children. They're creepy as fuck. Anyway, roundabout synopsis. Uh, this little family, uh, mom, a dad, uh, an autistic older sister, and a... Uh, younger sister who's not autistic move to a new city and uh for the dad's work and it's really it's completely focused on the kids so you rarely see anything but the parents if you're seeing anything about the parents it's from the perspective of the kid 
or of the kids, and you're mainly following the the younger daughter um, as she makes friends throughout this little complex town thing. It's like two apartment buildings on either side. Um, they make friends. Uh, they realize that some of them have uh, certain types of powers, and things get progressively worse from there. Could you say hilarity ensues? Hilarity does does indeed ensue. It's uh it's something. There's some fucked up shit in there that like I I needed a cold shower after one particular scene. I was not happy. I almost like turned it off right then in there cuz I'm like you can't. Ooh. You can't. No, this is not okay. I did not like it at all. Um, the two of you also will not like that scene. The moment you see it, you'll be like, the fuck is this? Um, right on. It's, right. it's, right. yeah, go, go, it's go, go, abnormally go. fucked. Yeah. So it escalates to a certain point. Um, as these children kind of discovered that they have powers and things get a little bit more and more crazy. And then it, the ending is just kind of, eh, it kind of goes out with a little bit of a whimper. I didn't really love the ending. I thought it was fine. But a little predictable right at the end. But there's enough shit in there leading up to it that's like, oh, fuck, this is some pretty fucked up stuff. And like, it's a little bit fucked up to think about as well. But yeah, the ending just kind of like it it, it just kind of ended with a whimper. And I kind of wish it ended with not a whimper. Um, but otherwise fun, but just not amazing. Not bad. Man. I like that you describe a movie as fun, even though you said you almost turned it off because you were so revolted. Yeah. Yeah. It's that like, it's just, I mean, maybe some people are okay with it. I would, I would love to to talk to someone who's also seen this movie and see what sort of how they felt about this one particular bit in the middle or in, towards really in the beginning too. Um, yeah. I mean, I, but like judging it as a whole, it's, uh, it's fine. It's fine. I don't know that I'd ever watch it again, but it's still it's it's something to see. And like it's it's certainly good enough to recommend that people at least watch it if they'd like to on Shutter. Um, but I wouldn't like really super go out of my way. Like I'm not saying go out and see this six times in the theaters. Like it's it's just fine. All right. All right. All right. Cool, cool. Dave, you got a man? <laughs> The Many Saints of Newark. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I finally, finally saw that movie. You didn't watch that when Jesus. it came out? No, I never got a oh, chance shit. to. All right. When I finally got to see it. And what a tragic mess this movie is. Yeah. It totally missed the mark, eh? It yeah. missed the mark so badly. Yeah. It's like all, it's like all the ingredients are there. Yeah. And it's just... Poor execution, what? man. Poor yeah. execution. Like, why isn't this a miniseries? Why are we yes. throwing? Why are you throwing in so many things? Why is Billy Magnuson cast as Polly Walnuts? Why? Who knows? Why? Who, who has the answers to these questions? And like the whole thing with the one character. Oh my god! And the race riots. And it's like, what? What? What are you doing? There's so much going on in that fucking movie. It like it felt like it should have been a miniseries, and maybe that's what they wanted to start with. But then they were like, "Nah, you know what? Let's do a movie instead." But the thing is, they didn't cut out enough. They just kind of left it all in there and shrunk it. Yeah, like Leslie Odom Jr. That's who I'm yes. talking about. He plays Harold McBrayer, and there's like a rivalry thing going on, and then it just kind of fizzles out. And there's that one scene where the like like shooting shotguns at each other which is awesome yeah. but it's like what the hell was this and like fucking Ray Liotta on fire again always and like always. Johnny Bernthal's there yeah. of course yeah. of course Johnny Bernthal's there and like Michael Gandolfini holy Jesus yeah. like the movie like the, like the whole movie is supposed to be about him but it's about Dicky Moltisanti, yeah, who's great. Alessandro Nivola, amazing in this movie. Yeah, but like, it's like, I want to know more about how Tony Soprano got there. Yeah, and it's like, it's like, just because there's a cameo from Carmela, like, come on. 
I and, um, Chris, Christopher, Christopher narrating Beyond the Grave. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Like the fuck? What that was, the that was fuck an odd was choice. that? <laughs> he always cries when he sees me. What is this nonsense? It's too many ideas, too many things going on, and just none of it to me comes together quite right at all. And way too much, way too much. Hey. Yeah. I also forgot that he had another sister. Oh yeah, like, that's right. Not just <laughs> Janice. Yeah, like when it kept going on, and I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" Yeah, Who the fuck is this guy? She she doesn't show up very often in the show, doesn't she? No, no. She just referred to. She shows up. Like I looked her she, yeah. up afterwards on Sopranos Wiki, and she is definitely yeah. a character in, is, the, yeah. in the show. She does but, show up yeah. on on occasion, but yeah, you know, not with the She's same regularity Janice. of Janice. Yeah, yeah, Janice. Janice is crazy. It's the jacket. Also, it's fucking Corey jack. Stoltz is fucking uh, Junior. Yeah, that yeah. was like that was strange. Like the cat, the cast yeah. is so fucking strange. Even the guy it's... who uh, plays Sill, like oh. he's like that guy in everything. Yeah. He, like he, John like, McGarrow. Yeah, yeah, literally the exact same. He, like his like worst impression of him because like he's not playing the character; he's doing an impression. Well, that's of, what half of them are doing. Yeah, yeah. and most of like, them are fuck, doing man. impressions. Yeah, man, like, like it's just that's such a letdown. That's why Alessandro Nivola is so good because he's not doing an impression; he's yeah. doing an original character. True. Yeah, exactly. You never exactly. saw Dicky on the show, right? You just yeah. heard yeah. about him. Yeah. yeah, well, there was a couple flashbacks, but again, yeah, you never saw him. He just was kind of, mm-hmm. I think kind he was like a voice over, or, yeah. yeah. He hangs over the show like yeah. a ghost. Yeah. 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 Right? And, yeah. But, and versus uh, versus Junior, who's a main character. Fucking, uh, yeah. what's, uh, what's his mom? Livia, who's a main character yeah. for the first two seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Polly Walnuts. Yeah. So, All main guys, yeah. So, yeah, it just, it really yeah. let me down. I was just, I was like, what the fuck? Jesus, you put this as your meh? I'm scared to know what your worst is. Get ready, buddy. I'm fucking Get ready. Jesus. Get ready. Can't wait for that. Tony, tell me what your worst is. Oh, man, this was, uh, this was, this was something. Uh, for my worst, I have Phantom of the Mall. Eric's Revenge. I wanted to see it so badly. The fuck is, is that? A, it is a cult eighties <clears throat> movie. Uh, it was on. It's on the Arrow collection. Arrow, Arrow oh, just okay. released like a big yeah, like yeah. book, like one of those like box sets of this movie. So obviously, I needed to watch it because I'm definitely not buying that blind. Fucking sure. chuckles over. Chuckles over there was thinking about buying it blind, and I convinced him not to after yeah. fucking telling him about this fucking. Holly Shores in it. Okay, oh, you want to read? You want to know why? You want to know why this movie sucks? Because Polly Shore saves the day at the end. You know your movie fucking sucks when Polly Shore comes out of fucking nowhere on a moped and saves the fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> weasel? The fucking weasel oh saved the God. day. And I said that out loud. I was like, this movie fucking sucks. Jesus. Honestly, it it's a retelling it's a remake of the phantom of the opera and instead of him fucking looming around the opera he's just hiding behind the walls in a in a shopping mall literally the exact same story storyline as phantom of the opera but he's inside the walls in the mall is there a chandelier uh no does he play an organ no well then it is not phantom of the opera <laughs> <laughs> Does he like, does he feel the music of the night? No, uh, he feels see? something. He feels something, and no. uh, it's probably the weasel. But like <laughs> this this movie, Dave, for the love of God, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, but it's totally eighties. So like, I can watch like it that, though, right? I want to watch it's, it. It's it's watchable. It's an eighties horror movie, man. All those eighties horror movies, they're all fun as fuck. So it's like I could see the humor and fun in it, but it's fucking god awful. I really want to rewatch the. Joel Schumacher Phantom of the Opera because Gerard Butler's oh the Phantom. Oh my god, Dave. No. Oh my god. Melissa's absolutely in love with that movie. No. Like she loves that movie more. Like, I'm pretty sure it's one of her favorite movies of all time. It's but so I, bad. I saw it in theaters. I saw it in theaters. You saw it in theaters? What? Yeah, my ex wanted to see it, so we saw it. It's so bad. bad. 
I've never seen it. So, never so seen bad. It. Which is surprising because I love Yeah, I love Gerard Butler. So I'm very shocked that you I won't love this. Seen it. Well, you know, most of his movies aren't that fucking good to begin with, so. Yeah, that's true. Except for whatever the fuck that movie was recently. What was it? Unhinged or something? Oh, no, no, it was Russell Crowe. Cop Shop. Greenland? Cop Shop. Um, Cop Shop. What That's about Den of Thieves? I haven't seen Den of Thieves. Oh, Den of Thieves. I've, always, I've really want to see Den of Thieves. It's Heat Jr., but like it's fucking glorious. All right. <laughs> But then again, Tony anyway. B- uh, Tony B is a, a Gerard Butler fan, so I don't know. Maybe let me take that with a grain of salt. What are you talking about? Three hundred, the ugly truth. Okay, now we're pushing. <laughs> <laughs> pushing all of the gonna... insert has fallen series. You're gonna you're gonna throw P.S. I love you at me. You know what? Hell yeah! I, have a, I have a soft spot for P.S. I love you. You should. That's because. That's because you're soft, Tommy. So yeah, I'm super just soft. soft. I'm just a soft guy. Super soft, Tony like, B. But it's it's so heartwarming. But I don't care. Well, why the fuck what are we law, talk about? What about, yes, law, what about law-abiding citizen? Oh, that was a good one too. That's <laughs> when he stabbed Spuddy with a T-bone steak. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> fucking yeah, yeah. What was that other fucking one? Uh, playing it, playing it cool. That absurd one that your uh, your mom watched, James. Wasn't oh, it playing it fuck. cool? Was it playing it cool? I don't know. I'm pretty Maybe. sure it was playing it cool. But what? why are we talking about Gerard Butler? James, I don't know. With your uh, worst. Yeah, I didn't have to. I, I mean, mine's probably not as bad as whatever the fuck you just described of Phantom of the Opera, but in a mall. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mine, I, it's been a pretty good, pretty good few weeks. So my my worst is only just because it was the worst out of everything that I saw. But that's not. That's a, it's, it's a pretty high bar. Um, playing for keeps. It was playing for keeps. There you go. Thanks, Tony. That's <laughs> yeah. That's I was. You know, I wasn't gonna be able to sleep at night without that information. Our listeners would not be able to fucking finish this episode if they didn't know that obscure fucking Gerard Butler movie. Yeah, now they're all gonna want to watch it. Now we got to come back and do a whole episode on Gerard Butler's career. No, <laughs> my worst <laughs> is Predator Two. And what? I, that's, I just said Oof. that it's only the worst because it's the worst I've seen over the last little bit, but that doesn't make it the worst. It's just the lowest rated one it's out of pretty a whole lot bad. of bangers. It's 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 fine. Did you not watch The Predator? Is that why this one's the worst? Because if you watched The Predator, that one probably would have been worse. I, we saw that one, didn't we? We did. I fell asleep because I was fucking bored. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, and he was there Max. too. So did we. Yeah. 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 yeah Shane Black was Shane there. Black I was, was really there. excited. Was... And then I was not excited. Yeah. I haven't seen that mm-hmm. since we saw it in IMAX for Neither the premiere. So no. Like when your move when your movie ends with a scene that clearly Arnold Schwarzenegger should be in. Yeah, and he's not. And he's not. It's, maybe uh, you should rethink the whole project. Yeah. It's uh yeah, that was also a big misfire. Um <laughs> But yeah, Predator 2, I mean, I'd never seen it before, and I was kind of watching it because I'd heard there were some loose connections between it and Prey, and I kind of wanted, before I watched Prey, I was like, you know what, maybe I'll watch Predator 1 and Predator 2. Predator 1 being great, um, and Predator 2 being fine, I guess. I mean, he's in a city. Um, I'm too old for this shit is there, and he's... Gary Busey. He, Gary Busey's there. Gary Busey's there. Yes. Yeah. He just got he just got charged with sexual assault because yeah, he's a that's, piece of shit. Yeah, he's a piece God of shit. God damn it, Gary Busey. He's a piece of shit. Well, yes. Um Yeah, I mean, Bill, I don't know. Bill fucking Paxton, boys. Bill Paxton. Yeah. Bill Paxton. Paxton. Yeah. Such a good time. Yeah. Like, RIP to that man. Jesus. There were some cool ideas in this. Some good cast and acting work. But just overall I don't know how you follow Predator 1. Like, it's that the franchise itself has struggled a lot trying to figure out how to be as good as the original Predator was. And I, it hasn't really succeeded until arguably Prey. It got pretty close to it. Um, but yeah, Predator 2 was not it. And it was just fine. I mean, it's uh, I never want to see it again. But I didn't hate it. 
to the extent that I was just like, ugh, I didn't fall asleep like the Predator. Um, it's just fine. It's just it's just it, after going, it's like Whiplash going from Predator One to Predator Two, and it just it it doesn't doesn't fully work. Although Predator in a city does sound pretty fucking cool, it just it's not as cool as you cool want moments. it to be. There's some really cool yeah. moments in it. It's yeah. just not the death. Death. There's the the death scenes are pretty decent, yeah. right? Like the kill. They get yeah. some pretty good kills. Gnarly kill. And yeah. whatever the fuck that like voodoo ceremony was. Yeah, that <laughs> shit was fucking wild. Yeah, the. The whole like gang thing, gang violence thing, I think that takes away from it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's way too over the top. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that yeah. It it and the fight the fight scene in the the train is pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. And I also enjoyed the um the bit in the in the warehouse too, where they like they thought they outsmarted the predator. And oh then, yeah, yeah, and because they have like all this cool tech, and it's like disabling his sensors from seeing them. But like, no, <laughs> it's not. It's just like it kind of did until the predator figured his shit out, and he was like, "Oh no, figured it out. Y'all gonna die now." Oh, and the the bit where fucking Danny Glover says, "You are one ugly," and the yeah. fucking predator says, "Motherfucker." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Amazing. God. Anyway, yes, probably oh. two. Dave, your worst. Finish it off, please. The specialist with Sylvester Stallone and oh. Sharon Stone. <laughs> oh, God. I watched this back to back with uh, Bullet to the Head, and that one wasn't very good either. What the fuck? What kind of fucking? St- <laughs> you could have done better. You could have uh, done better. The specialist. Holy Jesus, this movie's bad. It like James Woods is overacting so so hard. That oh, he's it's a foaming at the mouth. Oh my god. He's literally foaming at the mouth. I love James Woods in this movie. Sharon's, I actually watched it recently too, and that's Sharon's hilarious. Sharon Stone is just talking useless. about sexual innuendos and like she's just naked through most of it. And I'm like, yeah, all right. Like height of Sharon Stone and like Rod Steiger Oscar winning actor Rod Steiger is basically doing Scarface his best Scarface impression which is not very good and then you know Eric Roberts is there too but oh, it's fuck I forgot about Eric Roberts That's yeah, he's, he's just there it's like cool cool and it's there's a weird shower floor sex scene like oh there's weird phone calls it's like it's like borderline like so, like borderline like softcore porn that you yeah. ever seen it was fucking odd yeah and i like i saw way too much of sylvester stallone's ass uh and just all of this I, just I, sounds I very know, unpleasant it, it, it just wasn't very good and that there's ending a, there's though, a, eh, Dave? yeah that ending <laughs> and there's there's a twist but it comes maybe like 20 minutes too soon and mm-hmm. then there's still an hour of the movie to go oh no <laughs> oh and james yes the last like the last minute of the movie like as it go- goes to credits would you like to know what song plays over the credits is it lincoln parks what i've done no it's not <laughs> go on Turn the beat around like Gloria <laughs> Estefan. Oh my god! Oh, fuck, yeah, what the fuck? It's, it's a, like like if you have if Dave hasn't sold you on this movie, I don't know what will like like it's, it's so a total bad. banger. It's so bad. It's not it's so is unbelievably bad. It's, it's, it's not sounds, even fun. Sounds it's like a fun. terrible, terrible time. It's yeah. just it's not enjoyable at all. But. There's a lot of fun explosions. Oh, that's cool. Lots of lots of action. Like there's lots of explosions. So yeah. are, are, is it like one of those where we got to question how big the gasoline budget was on it? Maybe. Cuz that's a good that's a good point. Cuz there's not so, there's barely any shootouts. It's it's mostly All just explosions, explosions. cuz nice. he's a yeah. the specialist. He's a he's guy. A demolitions guy. He's a demolition specialist. Yeah, that makes sense. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I so. see what they did there. Yeah, so I chuck will this not one in the bin. It it's bad. It's bad. Maybe if watch you, the shower sex scene just for fun. If you, so if you find it like a dollar bin, just just take it from the dollar bin and put it in the trash can. 
Yeah. Yeah. Don't even, yeah. They'll, they'll pay you to throw it in the trash. All right. Like gas station dollar bin. Like. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. In the back of a shell for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Not like even a dollar, like 99 cents. Yeah. I vividly remember the poster at Jumbo Video and I never saw it until now. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I could have just kept going without seeing probably, it. <laughs> you probably could have just avoided it. Some of that poster stuck in your brain and you, you had to seek it out, but you shouldn't have. You no, shouldn't, I shouldn't have. have. I shouldn't have. So that's our best, my worst. Um, I'm taking a look at my little timer here. And if I can vamp for the next 30 seconds while we ramp up for this segment, Tony's going to have exactly one minute for his catch-up hour. Catch-up minute. Catch-up hour? Good God, no, please don't talk that long. Um, Tony, you've got a you you got, you've watched some things. It's time for you to actually catch up to uh, to the big boys, right? You've, yes. You've seen things that you should have seen a while ago, but you finally had time to do it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, when do I start? You start right now i'll start off with a simple movie dave saw it at tribeca it's called jerry and marge go large it's a very fun movie um harmless fun brian cranston is absolutely amazing he'll uh remind you of uh malcolm in the middle cool. uh, even though he, he uh is pretty much walter white at this point but it was a very fun movie they um yeah 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 that's all nice. i gotta say about that one cool the next, next one i saw i'm going real fast here i good keep going but <laughs> uh i saw the gray man some one of my uh one of my dear friends recommended the gray man to me and uh after i saw it i immediately put her in uh movie recommendation jail because that <laughs> movie is fucking trash She's no longer a dear friend just Next. just no longer a dear friend uh no i love her dearly she's 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 pretty awesome anyways next r r r fucking fantastic james how much time do i have to talk about go go, go 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 oh my god this movie's fan fucking tastic the movie's three hours long um i paused it at a certain scene and i told james about it i paused it at a certain scene and then when i went back to it it fucking fucked me right up man it just balls to the wall dave you're a fucking idiot for not seeing this movie get me the steelbook 4k special edition arrow fucking criterion jerk me off like <laughs> movie is fantastic and i need that version you know you know you need that on your fucking shelf 100 man seek it out immediately 100 percent. hey that was pretty good it was a minute and a half we'll get there we'll get there fucking minute and a half what yeah. the fuck guys pretty good. okay pretty so good. it's the tony b 90 minute 90, 90 second, second catch up 90 sorry you know, nobody wants to hear you talk for <laughs> hear you talk for 90 minutes well that's they fucking come, rude they come for the they come for the full package not just it's not always, just the singles always but hey that was good i'm glad you've seen rr and yeah dave get on it and also yes please if there's any additions special or otherwise put my name down on that list immediately dave don't even ask me the yeah. question just slap your credit just card do down and and buy it for me big daddy and just, fuck the gray man just send you a bill <laughs> yeah just invoice me <laughs> I'm sure you have like some fucking like weird website running like Amazon fucking Blu-ray deals and shit that just like pings you every morning with like, here's 78 new Blu-rays we've just automatically added to your cart. Oh, you're not far off. Yeah. You're not far off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Shall we move into our main segment? Yes, let's hit it. All right. So uh, I will say for like releases and stuff like that it's been a relatively slow august hasn't been yeah. much in the way of new things so we were kind of sitting here and trying to figure what we could uh what we could talk about and uh to coincide with a few things and mainly because um my favorite second favorite movie of the year uh is uh only could exist because of this man Top Gun Maverick is what I'm talking about here. We're going to talk about the reason behind why it could even exist now. The director of that film, the great, the late, unfortunately, Tony Scott. Ten years gone, boys. Ten, Ten years, years gone. gone. It's a fun Brad fact. Do you know his uh, 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 Ridley's a knight, and uh, they just they never did that for Tony. It's sad. Very sad. sad. Mistakes were made. Look, they took the wrong Scott, guys. They certainly did. <laughs> they did. They did. <laughs> you, guys for, are, well, you guys are awful. <laughs> for for very very different. Like 
they're very different directors and they did very, very different things. It's just so different movies, man. Tony Scott fun. did a lot of fun shit, man. <laughs> He's more, he, on, he was more honest. Yeah. He was more like, he did some experimental stuff, but he, his work was honest and it was like blue collar stuff. And it was just none of this goofy shit where he needed to make every movie, a director's cut. Yeah. Or come back later 10 years later when there's theories and be like oh yeah i totally meant that the here's whole time. the final cut here's, fuck you ridley you know, this this thing that you you totally like made up by yourself yeah. that i didn't have any idea about oh yeah that was what i went for yeah yeah, yeah. what did you, you think really the ending was is he sits there with a notepad ready to take down <laughs> what the audience thought i could i could go for days days on my disdain for ridley scott yes yes i know you could but, but let's talk about tony 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 scott tony scott um keep saying tony guys I tony like yeah, yeah. tony, comes out of your mouth. tony. <laughs> oh <laughs> tony man uh, all right you're taking it to a place that i did not <laughs> want to go <laughs> so crazy <laughs> tony scott tony scott the director yes. of true romance top gun Beverly Hills Cop 2, The Hunger, Days of Thunder, Tide, Days of Thunder, The Last Boy Scout, Enemy of the State, <sighs> Enemy of the State, Unstoppable, Taking, Taking Pelham 1, 2, 3, The Remake, yes, did Domino. We say, did we say Man on Fire? We did not. Deja Vu. Deja Ooh. Vu, yeah. That was, that was Just, in his Denzel phase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Reve- Revenge? Revenge. Is that Kevin, Revenge, is that Kevin yeah. Costner? Yep. Yeah, see, yeah, bangers, Lamar? just just bangers, just banger after. Maybe did we blue collar. Yes. Yeah, yes, we, we did, did the hang hunger. Yeah. Maybe blue collar bangers, but bangers nonetheless. There's nothing. Just man, me and Tony saw the or watched the last Boy Scout. We yeah. Rented it from the library, and we watched the last Boy Scout, and we liked it so much that we we just. Whatever we had to do next, we didn't. We just rewatched The Last Boy Scout. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Just, I just, I love, love, love that movie. Shane Black. Like, I yeah. love it. Yeah. You, you want to yeah. talk about matches in heaven? Fucking Tony Scott and Shane Black, man. Yeah. yeah. And like Beverly Hills Cop 2 is. Like it's not as good as the first one, but it's a banger still. It's yeah. so it's so different. Like it's radically different than than uh, than the, the first original. one. Yeah. yeah, and just and Top Gun, obviously. Top Gun, seriously, obviously. Yeah. And we could not have Maverick if Top Gun OG didn't exist in the first place. And you fucking know. True Romance, yeah. Quentin Tarantino, yeah. Just Holy teaming hell. up with some like great writers to make seriously. Holy hell! Some Another match made in heaven, movies. man. Yeah. Fuck. Holy hell. Yeah. And just like his action is just like I don't love Man on Fire, but the action in that movie is insane. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. Insane. Even taking a Pelham, you know, for like a remake, it's it's fucking wild, man. Yeah, man, un uh, unstoppable. Unstoppable is about a runaway train. Oh, there yes. is no yeah. there is no director that <laughs> could make that movie interesting <laughs> except Tony Scott. <laughs> yeah, you, it's we, on rails. It's, I'm like, <laughs> we lost. We're on How rails. Was <laughs> the train lost? <laughs> um, we've been we've been talking a lot about these sort of like either actual sequels and in, in terms of like Beverly Hills Cop, but also like. You're something like unstoppable, and you're like, okay, so kind of like speed on a train, um, or taking the Pelham one two three, which was like a legit remake. But like, I read something on Twitter a little while ago, and it, was, it all kind of coincided. And like, Top Gun Maverick just came out, and that film is dedicated to Tony Scott. Um, Tony Scott's was it his passing anniversary or his birthday that just recently passed? Uh, his passing, his passing. Uh, it just recently happened. So like all of this kind of like really well coincided with, with us taking a deep dive. But yeah, this tweet I read was just like, I, I just kind of love that Tony Scott just kind of made all of these unauthorized sequels to a bunch of movies <laughs> and just like, no one kind of did anything about it. They were just like, yeah, all right, sure. Um, yeah, like I watched. Do you want to argue with Tony Scott? Come no, on. I if no. no, I like no, I watched Enemy fucking... of the State, and that movie is basically just like the conversation to Electric Boogaloo. Like it's, <laughs> it's just wild. Like, 
I got halfway through Gene Hackman shows up and I'm like, the fuck this is you. You're just you're, you're the guy from the conversation all over again, just with a different name. Like the fuck is this? <laughs> Maybe he went into witness protection. It's quite possible. It's quite or possible. It was just, it, it was just a pseudonym. It wasn't his real name. Maybe. 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 Right. Cause he was very, uh, he was very suspicious of everything. He like tore his whole house down to the last bit of the conversation. Spoilers. Spoilers for a 50 year old movie. It's uh, almost 50 years old. Fuck. Yeah, man. Fuck. Jesus. Que- question for you, James. Yeah. You saw, cause you saw Enemy of the State. Yep. Did he start, does his style start changing around then? Like with the intense close ups and like the camera always like on a fucking dolly? Like, that was oh, the one thing yeah, I had no, with fucking. This, this, you know what? And that was something I noticed too. Like, this movie was more. I was wondering, because like I was wondering when his style changed. It's much more right? frantic. Like, there's a lot of like very, 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 very rapid cuts. There's a lot of Dutch yeah. angles for some reason. That threw me off a bit. Um, but yeah, like there's scenes and in this like it deals with a lot of like nsa technology so like mm-hmm. there's a lot of like satellite imagery but it's like like you're just kind of moving all over the place. it's very like it keeps the pace high because it's just like constantly on yeah. fire it's not sort of like locked off sitting there zooming in slowly like it's very fast and moves very very quickly with a lot of quick edits it also has some of the most absolutely fucking ridiculous technology things i've (laughs) ever seen where like they have a they have a static security camera shot and then the guy goes yeah let's rotate that video 75 degrees around the vertical and the video just like moves and like you can how 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 <laughs> you didn't have that angle there was no camera over there where are you getting this image from you know what it doesn't fucking matter it was, none of it matters big willy is bullshit 90s yeah like the human is here yeah, we can yeah. do we can yeah. do all this wacky yeah all this wacky technology stuff yeah well, it was so turn, turn, of of, turn of the century right it was yeah. like 90 90 around and 98 98 right yeah so that so that technology that 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 makes sense yeah it just and yeah, it's Big Willie. Yeah, it's yeah, Big Willie. Big Willie. I didn't. I didn't like. It, it, it's it's good. It's a good movie. It just I, the editing was kind of a little bit off, and maybe that's as you were saying, Tony. If maybe that's because like his style was changing at that time, and he yeah, just wasn't quite yeah. comfortable with it yet. Um, but also just like the way that it's structured didn't quite work for me. There was like so much given to the audience, and then you're just kind of like watching Will Smith try to figure this out slowly whereas i kind of maybe would have enjoyed it almost a little bit more almost as a sort of like political spy thriller thing if we were slightly more lost like will smith was but like the audience is given everything from the start you know exactly what's happening so in your head you're clear but like you're just watching these people go like what 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 like as they figure (laughs) things out and i kind of just wanted to be a little bit more confused as i went through and i wasn't because it was all like I see the beginning, I see the end, I know exactly how this is going to play out, and it does. So that was sort of my only like major complaint with it. Otherwise, yeah, this cast is insane. This is fucking Gene Hackman, Will Smith, uh, Regina King, um, uh, what's her name? Is it Melissa Bonet? Uh, Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet. Uh, Jamie Kennedy, Jack Black. Uh, Jake Busey, Seth, Seth, uh, Seth Green, is in it Seth too, Green. Uh, <laughs> who the fuck else? Um, uh, Scott Con, <laughs> like just oh, Scotty Con, Scott Con, it? It. yeah. There's just and you like sold me, a fucking John Voight, whatever. But you know, this was John Voight in, but the four before times, um, yeah. It's just. It's a wild cast. <laughs> like, there's so many people in this movie. I was just like, this guy's in it? This guy's in it? Like, and it just keeps going. A good Love time. It. A good time. Obviously. Tony, yeah, before but... you before you continue, yes. we forgot the fan with Robert yep. De Niro oh, and Wesley and Snipes. Wesley Snipes, yeah. And that was a Spy... remake too. Yes. And Spy Game with uh Brad Pitt and uh... Spy Game. Yeah, Bobby I was Redford. gonna I was gonna bring that up too because like 
enemy of this he went enemy of the state then spy game then i think he took like a a break after spy game and then made man on fire man on and fire. then man on fire was a completely different style that's when he started doing the crazy fucking uh movement with the camera and the cuts and yeah. like his style completely changed because then you go into uh you go man on fire and then you go domino and then domino is just so like yeah the editing is so messed up that it's even hard to watch domino because like he's just fucking cutting all the fucking time domino 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 yeah coffee. <laughs> yeah and he's like and he's like doing like the stutter thing with like the color and how like the colors like blend in together mm. that he fu- he fucked around with that in uh man on fire too but it looks even fucking worse at domino like i just remember having a complete fucking headache watching domino because of that and like it was even it was even worse and fucking um unstoppable like the camera never stationary like i feel like he just had like a fucking the dolly on the track the entire time and he just shot fucking just moving that fucking camera up and down because it would cut it would do a three it would do like a fucking 180 around the person and then cut to the next person and the fucking camera's already fucking moving like oh the michael bay the michael bay (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, it's fucking infuriating. But like, I could tell. Like, but like, hats off to him for changing his style. Yeah, right, and doing something different and doing something more inventive with uh, with action movies. Like I said, he was more honest. Yeah, he, he tried new. Th- he honest. tried new things. He did. Totally agree with you, Dave. Uh, that's kind of what I was going to say too. Like, good for him for like constantly you know, evolving that style of his and, and, and moving through. But yeah, I, I think that makes him definitely a more honest filmmaker, someone who's more willing to try new things and, you know, maybe sometimes they don't work, but he kept going and just kept trying and different stuff all the time. And it just, you know, he never, I don't know. I, of all of his, like m- most of his movies are pretty good. Like he and has all, they're all very different movies. But yeah, they're all very, very different. Like, he's not locked like, into a genre. He's not locked into a style. No, he's, he's not a, locked he, into he's, an he's actor, the place. except for his yeah. Denzel phase. Yeah. Like, like even his Denzel phase. There's yeah. five, five movies with Denzel, and they're five completely different movies. Yes, very. Other than the fact that two of them take place on a train. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the only similarity. Yeah. Like the red, like they're all very different movies. Yeah. Dave, did you watch any, did you watch any Tony Scott's recently? (sighs) Well, I watched Top Gun a few months ago and we don't Uh, need to talk about Top Gun other than, you know, the playing with the boys scene on the beach (laughs) and whatever awkward sex scene he has with Kelly McGillis. Yeah. Oh, uh, but you can't hear man. "Take My Breath Away" and not think of it now. It's it's, it's just intri- like that soundtrack yeah. is intrinsic to that movie. It is. Yo, a, d- it's brilliant. Do you know what I just realized? What? what he does the same fucking sex scene in True Romance with the blue and the silhouettes and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I just watched it True Romance more, recently, and it look and it obviously it yeah. looks a little bit normal in True Romance, but like <laughs> he did the same fucking thing. Yeah, it, it actually looks like a sex scene though in True Romance. <laughs> it's not this weird thing with Tom Cruise just on top of the. <laughs> yeah. Loosely oh, moving, implying sexual activity. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Days of Thunder. Nice. I've never seen before. I had an either. <laughs> and uh I didn't love it, mm. but it's uh the scene like the racing scenes are insane. Yeah. Insane and the, uh, like you were saying about the cast like oh yeah, fucking what? John C. <laughs> Riley, Michael Rooker, Robert uh, Duvall, Robert Duvall, yeah. Randy Quaid, yeah. Randy Quaid, Randy Quaid. Oh, and uh Carrie Ells. Yeah. And fucking, it's the movie where he met Nicole Kidman. Yeah. And yeah. like, just insane. Holy, it's insane. And it's, it's well filmed and well shot. Yeah. I think the problem with it is it feels like two movies smashed together. 
Yeah. Because, like, he has the rivalry with Michael Rooker for about half the movie. Yep. And then sudden, like, suddenly he's he's still the rookie, but suddenly there's another rookie sensation who's trying to take the mantle from him. Yeah. Like, it felt like, it felt, it felt like Cars 1 and Cars 3 kind of together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just, like, it was odd. Yeah. It was odd story-wise, but, like... Those racing scenes, though. The racing Holy scenes are insane. Shit. He's like, they're like racing fucking wheelchairs and then rental cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beach. That rental car racing scene is fucking <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. And like the scenes with like the car crash, like the crashes are fucking yeah. crazy. Like, it's really well shot. And yeah. the cast is great. And I love the orange. Like the movie is so orange and oh, I yeah. love how orange it is. It's like, and it's like the prototype for like, this is, this is when the movie goes to Mexico. It's that orange. Yeah. <laughs> it's and uh, just, and yeah. it made me a little, uh, it cr- made me cringe a little bit when it was showing like the crowd scenes with how many people are in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. But that would be now, like not yeah, 30 yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah, but exactly. even 30 years ago, that's a lot of fucking people. Yeah. But uh, it it yeah. totally it totally made me miss the I don't know if you guys ever went, but um, when Canada's Wonderland was Paramount Canada's Wonderland, they had the uh, the motion theater with like the fucking seats with the handles and shit. There was always Days of Thunder. That was always my favorite one that they run. Um, and it was mainly like scenes. I think it was like additional footage, but also scenes from Days of Thunder that they used. And like it was the racing scenes where you were locked in the seats, and the seats were like you'd feel the bumps and shit. As it, it was like the proto proto four DX, um, but like way more intense with like fucking handles that you'd hold on to and a seat belt because it was just like it would fucking throw you off. Um, and <laughs> when like we saw yeah. Top Gun, we could have used the seat. Belt. Oh fuck me, man! Yeah, that that was wild. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was, th- it was that. And like, yeah, uh, watching those scenes play out just where I didn't have to like be violently thrashed around was, uh, a lot more enjoyable, but it made me miss, uh, it made me miss Paramount Canvas Wonderland <laughs> back when everything sure. was a Paramount property and not fucking like high flyer. No, it's fucking top gun is what the <laughs> fuck that ride is. Or stunt. What is it? Stunt run or. Oh yeah. Uh, Hollywood, stunt. uh, Hollywood stunt, stunt. Uh, backlot stunt car or something like that for whatever the Italian, Italian job. job yeah. yeah, so much better when it was actually branded properties or like Tomb Raider, which I think is like Sky Sorer or some nonsense. I don't fucking know. Who cares? Either way, but the four K. Yes. I have it on. I have Days of Thunder on four K, and nice. there's a there's an option to just listen to the score, like an isolated score track. Oh, and it's just Hans Zimmer's score. Oh and, yeah, but. Like when it's not playing the score, it's just dead air. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. So the bit with them, uh, with them racing the the rental cars, it's completely silent. But they're like trashing each other. But because yeah. Hans Zimmer's it's... score is not on it, like it's just a silence. It's that's weird. It's a silent film. What of a, cars. What crashing. an odd option to have. Yeah. For it's that cool, movie, though. I mean, like for it's cool, movie, but yeah. like it's weird for that movie that doesn't have like a score going constantly. It's like, wh- but then why? <laughs> yeah, it was odd. But Hans Zimmer, man, no. Another, another, another gentleman who uh, doesn't doesn't do the same thing. That man delivers, times. though. He delivers. It's true. Tony, did you watch a Tony Scott recently? Um, I talked about uh, Unstoppable. That one, that one wasn't wasn't the greatest, but uh, like like I said, if anyone's gonna make a movie about a runaway train, interesting, it's fucking Tony Scott. Yeah, is is Chris Pine the best Chris? Um, in, in this movie or just in general? In general. In general. Uh, no, no. Ooh. I know who the best Chris is. Who is it? Wait doesn't technically count because his name not Chris but like his full what? when you like extend his fucking name is it it's Christopher oh Christopher Walken uh, are we is there really is there really like I mean, come on guys I, I honestly I kind of thought you were like oh if you extend his name I was like are you gonna 
you gonna say Jesus Christ? What <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> no, man, Christopher Walken. Like that's fair. He, like it's still technically Chris. He just goes by Christopher. How do we know that Chris Pine isn't Christopher Pine? It it probably legally is. <laughs> well, then there you go. Just because just because he doesn't go by it, fucking Christopher Walken. That is the best Chris. None of this. I do like bullshit. Chris Pine though. I, I also he's, like Chris he's, Pine. He's not the greatest in this movie. And fucking Denzel is so like over over the top and over dramatic and like you want to talk about casts, this fucking movie. Like and like a who's who of that guys. So you got Chris Pine, you got Denzel Washington, you got Rosario Dawson, you got nice. Kevin Dunn. Um, oh, yeah, okay. He's a that he's a that guy. Yeah, he's a that you guy. You got fucking TJ Miller doing not TJ Miller. All right. All right. Let's not um, talk about TJ Miller. <laughs> you got uh what's his fucking name? Is his name Ethan Ethan Supply? Um Supley, yeah. yeah. Supley. Yeah, he's fucking in it. Um and there's there's a couple other random ass characters. But like just in a Tony Scott movie, it's just stack casts. Stack casts everywhere. Yeah. yeah, that guy was always able to get like a whole bunch of uh of people to come out yeah yeah so then that was unstoppable and then i also watched true romance and i yes, watched it with my, and i watched it with my wife who yeah. watched it for the very first time oh how and cute! yeah is it cute though james because she said she didn't like it that much i take it back she was like what is this movie and i was like it's quentin tarantino it's tony scott christian slater you can't go wrong. You can't, I was you can't like, go wrong with C Slates, man. I was like, you'll fucking love it. And she's like, you know what? It wasn't that exciting. And I was mm. like, she was like, it just built to something. And then after it, you're just kind of like, meh. And I was like, hold on. It has three, three, count them, one, two, three of cinema's best fucking scenes. Like the scene in the fucking whorehouse with Drexel right mm. before fucking Slater fucking just goes batshit. That's an yeah, old timer. That's wild, yeah. The fucking scene with Christopher Walken and Dennis Hopper, like, oh, yeah. that is one of the best written scenes, if not the best, no, you know what? One of the best written scenes in all of cinema. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, like, that, in, that the, Christopher in, the, in the RV, yeah. Yeah, like, Walken, just whatever came out of his mouth is actual amazing it, it's it's gold it's sure. gold yeah and then you got the fucking mexican standoff at the end yeah that's an absolute bananas. all fucking timer this movie is damn near perfect i wouldn't say it is perfect but it is fucking very close to it and it's an all-timer for fucking Christian Slater. I would yeah. say that's my favorite Christian Slater movie. Behind, I wouldn't tell you what the what the second one is because you'll judge me. But is it Hard it's a, Rain? It's not fucking Hard Rain, <laughs> David. You know what it would be. Look at look into my eyes. What would be my follow-up Christian Slater movie? Broken Arrow. Fucking Broken Arrow. <laughs> right. no. I would say Heather's. I was gonna right, say Heather's. Broken, <laughs> nah, broken arrow. broken arrow. Fucking Broken Arrow, man. Apparently, Tony doesn't like getting fucked gently with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> what about an Interview with a Vampire? Broken Arrow. All right, that's All right. fair. So, are you are you getting a divorce? What's, what's the yeah deal? yeah? What's uh, what's that, the deal? There? Like, I don't I don't think if you go to divorce if you, if you go see a, a lawyer or a a judge on this and just be like, what's the reason? Well, she didn't like true romance. No quite no more questions. Fuck it. Not even divorce, annulled. <laughs> you didn't know this going into the marriage. You were you were you were married on false pretenses. <laughs> annulled. Well, well, she doesn't I'll get half you your shit. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. I'll tell you this, boys. In Putacana, she was like, I've never seen Scarface. Let's watch Scarface. I was like, okay. So she gets one more chance. Oh. If she speaks ill of yeah, Scarface, no, she can't. She's then, not allowed. Then, yeah, then you know. Maybe you shouldn't show her Scarface. To, yeah, yeah. Maybe just, just, or we just or preface it with if you didn't like it, <clears throat> don't say anything. <laughs> if you got nothing good to say, just, say nothing, nothing at all. Just just say nothing. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was that was kind of a letdown. I'm not gonna lie because I was very excited to show her true romance. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 
Yeah. But ult- ultimately, I would say that what True Romance would be top tier Tony Scott for me. That's fair. That's fair. Totally fair. Yeah. yeah. One of his best by far. What by, by miles. Although I, really... I did, I was looking at, I was trying to figure out which, I ended up with Enemy of the State, as I mentioned, but like I was trying to figure out what Tony Scott to watch. And I, I saw that, like I was looking at, I was like, oh, fuck, I haven't seen Man on Fire in forever. Oh, that would have been another one. I, yeah, I, I really would, love I, Man on I, Fire. I would love to watch that again. It's been a long, long time. I think I rented that from Blockbuster. Ooh. That feels Ooh. right. Yeah, that sounds right. I, I watched it with it my dad. The... Yeah, I saw it in the theaters with my dad, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. You guys are cuties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, I, I was going to watch Crimson Tide because I've never seen Crimson Tide. Oh, yeah. You fucking, you're so on this movie. I'm surprised you didn't, actually. I really wanted to. Well, I, I, had the 4K of da- I had the 4K of Days of Thunder, so yeah. I thought that that was the better yeah, choice. It's, it wasn't a wrong choice. I don't even know. I, maybe not better, but just, you know, you got to watch something crazy in 4K and like... She sure. said those racing scenes, man. Holy shit. I also just realized that I also own Top Gun and True Romance in 4K. <laughs> yeah. I need Last Boy Scout on. I need Last Boy Scout on 4K. Jeez. Yeah. You gotta get yeah. that Crimson Crimson Tide on 4K, bro. Everything on 4K. Out, maybe I will. Everything maybe on I will. 4K. Maybe I will. But yeah, he's a... I think he's more of a... Like we keep saying... I thought he was more of an honest filmmaker and it's tragic that he's gone. Yeah. It would be interesting to see what kind of action movies he'd be making now. Yeah. In, and his, maybe, in his twilight years. Yeah. And maybe he would have gotten Denzel to avoid Roman J Israel Esquire. <laughs> You'd hope, right? Like he would have just him and Tony Scott would have come making movies and then he would never have had to say, let's make Roman J Israel Esquire. I don't know. Like, there's a lot of actors that do like one for them and one for me. But what was Roman J. Oscar Esquire one for nobody? Because <laughs> he did get an Oscar nomination. For he it. should not have. <laughs> Tony, have you? You still haven't seen it, have you? I've, that, because he, he got told me not to. He got an Oscar nomination because they basically disqualified James Franco. Oh yes, one, that's right. And two, it was during Oscar So White. Oh and yeah, they were just, uh, and they yeah. were just like. Oh, Denzel's in a movie this year. <laughs> Denzel! No. No. Yeah. You, I mean, you should yeah. watch it at some point just so that you can also get on the hate game, but just don't... Well, I need to check it off my letterbox, right? Oh, like, yeah, You guys man. know why I watch Fucking... movies? It's, <laughs> it's just... Oh, my God. This place, guys, we're, this... ruin, we're ruining... Our Tony Scott Tony retrospective. Scott, yes. to talk I, about I was Roman just, I was just about to, I was just yeah. about to bring this back to Tony yeah. Scott. If he were still alive today, do you think he would be doing streaming movies? Like, do you think he would direct the stream world? Yeah. Mm. No. No. Maybe. Actually, maybe. Maybe. I think you know. Again, like we're talking about him being a filmmaker <laughs> that is not afraid to sort of like move and adapt and change as things move on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he would be a stick in the mud about it. I think he would be like, hey, there's a good market here for it, and especially the general theme of his films being a little bit more action based, maybe a little bit, I think we almost kind of said a little blue collar ish. Yeah. Um, I feel like, like he probably would have maybe adapted to just being like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. Throw it on Netflix or insert streaming platform here. Like mm-hmm. extraction is a very, that's a Tony Scott X esque film. And you mentioned the gray man like that would also be yeah a yeah. tony scott style film right except it neither of them would look like dog shit <laughs> yeah like i'm pretty sure tony scott would have been like would have called up fucking tom cruise for the gray man and be like yo tom i need you to do a fist fight out of a fucking after jumping out of a out of an airplane can you do it fuck yeah tony let's do it yeah and tom yeah. cruise would do it and not that's and not give us that CGI fucking bullshit that that was. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think he would. have. Yeah. Like, I think you're right. I think he might've done more, st- some streaming stuff and he probably, w- and he would have made Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. And it would have came out five years ago, but yeah, I think he would have, I think he would have continued experimenting. Yeah. I think he would have, he should have gotten knighted. Yeah. And, yeah. 
Yeah. I think he would have continued producing too, because I don't know if you guys looked at his producing oh, credits. It's, it's oh, insane. yeah, he definitely had some ins- insane, insane like, producing credits. Like, well, it was I think it was him and Ridley though. Like that was their company, right? Scott. Yeah, Free. that was their yeah, that was their company. But like just looking at this stuff, like it's all over the fucking place. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fucking wild. It's insane. They produced a lot. They also produced a lot of TV as well. Yeah, they got into a lot of things. A Scott Free. I remember. I think it was Numbers. I think was a Scott Free production. Yep, was. Thank you, thank you for knowing that, Dave. I appreciate that. I did a I did a deep dive on uh, Tony Scott uh, projects. Oh, uh, <laughs> did you watch the entire series of Numbers? No, I mean like I saw. Oh the yeah, produce, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's how I figured out the producing yeah. credits because I yes. and then I saw yeah, that yeah. Numbers was one of them. I really liked that show. Rest in peace to that show. Wow, this is uh, this one is weird. Him and Ridley Scott produced In Her Shoes, yeah, which is yeah. a movie with Cameron Diaz and Tony Collette. Yeah, it's a what a fucking random. Like, it's this a film. Is, this guy's filmography is just all over the place. He he did not want to be in one one he place didn't want to be at one time. Man, yeah, he didn't want yeah, to be seriously. Like he even does, he even does like a horror movie when he does the hunger, or the hunger, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I would love to see a Tony Scott uh, horror movie. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Oh fuck! I still need to watch Val as well. Speaking of things that Tony Scott. Oh yeah. Had. That's still yeah. on my watch list of things. Yeah, I've never seen that. I want to. Yeah, I gotta watch it. Well, we'll talk about it on the next podcast because mainly because uh, super friend of the podcast, Josh Fumo. Uh, head of Foley podcast hates Val Kilmer, and so I think I think I need to have a little discussion about Val Kilmer on here just just for him specifically for Val him. Kilmer. I don't Man. know. I don't know. We gotta. I gotta. I gotta do a, a dive, and I'm just gonna, you know, roast him on here. He just doesn't. He clearly doesn't like pretty actors. No. No. I get it. I get it. Some of us. You just. Some of us are just born jealous. <laughs> We lost the we lost anyway, the legend. We lost the true legend. Roundabout way. Yeah. Tony Scott was great. Seek out any of his films. If you definitely. haven't, you've definitely seen maybe one or two in your life. There's no way oh, that you there's, haven't. There's no way. There's but no way. Maybe dig into his filmography a little. Maybe some of the ones that we mentioned here. Maybe there's something we mentioned. You're like, oh fuck, I haven't seen that movie in forever. Kind of like I just did with Man on Fire. Throw it on. You're in for a good time. Seek his earlier work too. Yeah. Like yeah, don't He's get limited to the early two no. thousands. You can go back. No, eighties, nineties. Tony Scott, the class, the classics. Yeah, you need to seek them out. And True Romance, if you haven't seen it, True Romance do for it. sure. You should totally do it. Well, I think that wraps up wraps up our boy Tony Scott quite well. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Gone too soon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But all that said. Uh, Dave, I think it's time for a quick segment because this episode's getting a little bit long in the tooth. Uh, Dave's new blues. One minute, Dave's new blues. How can I speak in just a minute? Well, I I, yeah, for it. you it's oh, hard. You for you it's hard. That's true. You I have a very uh, verbose. Verbose. Very I verbose. was gonna say you have a, a a gravitas to you that that needs to come out in a certain cadence. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so Paramount has been releasing uh, the Indiana Jones films uh, on Steelbook on their own. Right. Because last year they remastered in 4K. They remastered the whole collection in 4K. And I didn't really need to rebuy all of the Indiana Jones films. And then they started bringing them out um, on Steelbook with like the original poster art. Cool. And then it comes with... Uh, like the teaser poster as well, like right. a copy of the teaser poster. And so I bought Raiders a few months ago and then last crusade just came out. So I had to buy that. Nice. Looks amazing. Sounds amazing. And I rewatched the ending and them riding into the sunset. That's yeah. That's the perfect ending yeah. for that franchise. What do we, did we really need? Do we really need to say anything else? Nope. But we did anyway. 
like I haven't seen that. Like I saw that movie in theaters with Tony on opening night and I don't think I've seen it since. Yeah, that's fair. I definitely haven't. Yeah, that's fair. Like I remember liking it, but you know, I also remember, but wait a minute, but wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah, I just remember like, yeah, I remember watching that movie and I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Shia Buff started swinging with the monkeys. <sighs> and then it was all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. And then everything to do with the pyramids and aliens, alien ships, and whatever the fuck was happening there. I, I don't and know. And the crystal skull. <laughs> I don't know. The fridge. At least, oh, and the gopher. And the gopher. <laughs> hey, man. At least they brought back Nazis as the villain, which, you know, obviously. Uh, as you do. Yeah, as, as you do. do. And this one in uh, Last Crusade is all like Nazis too. <laughs> they are the best villains. Yes. Easy, easy to hate. You just set them up right away. All of that said, I don't think I need the Crystal Skull no. uh, steel book. And I'm probably going to skip Temple of Doom. No Kali Ma for Dave. A, no Kali Ma for Dave. Fucking banger, though. Kali mm. Ma. Kalima, Kalima, short round. Oh yeah, who's about to get nominated for an Oscar? God willing. Still got to see that movie. Speaking of a movie, Tony needs to see. Yeah, that better be in the next <laughs> catch up minute, homie. Uh, don't tempt me because it just might. Good. You tempt you. Do minutes. it. You can have two minutes for that one. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. But before we wrap it up. Uh, just want to uh, say that uh, TIFF is coming up, which 100%. is the best time of the year. And I'm accredited uh, for press nice. uh, through a uh, friend of the podcast, Mr. Will Wong. Yes. And Tony is uh, industry. Yep. So we're going to uh, tear it up. Yeah, man. And Dave you guys and Tony better. Style. You guys oh, better. We We're going to uh, the next the next episode, which will probably be talking about some TIFF stuff. I'm going to uh, I'm going to be a host. I'm going to just ask you guys a whole bunch of questions, and uh, we're going to do it that way. Because unfortunately, your boy Jim can't make it this year. He's got too much going on. I can't really take any time off, so I might be able to squeak in maybe a movie or two. But it's not certainly not going to be like the last few years. Unfortunately, not this year. Sad times. Yeah. Sad times. But. That's okay. You two are going to go. You guys are going to cover the festival for me and you're going to, you're, we're going to make a list. We're going to make a list of everything that I need to see and what, you know what, what all the people at home need to see. And I'm going to, I'm going to be like one of our listeners and just learn while we talk. It's going to be fun. Tony, do you have any, uh, any movies you're really excited about? I wrote down four movies that I'm very, very, very excited for. Let me hear them. Uh, Triangle of Sadness, which is mm. the Palm the Palm Door winner. Yep. Do I have that right? Yep. Palm Door winner. Um, I know absolutely nothing about this movie. I know Woody Harrelson's in it, and I know it takes place on a cruise ship. Sure. And hilarity I'm, ensues. And it's hilarity satire. ensues. Yeah. <laughs> I can't fucking wait. Uh, next up, I got Butcher's Crossing. Uh, cool. It's a western. And Nick Cage is the the main character. That's I don't need, need to know anything nope. fucking else about that. Put it on That's the list. one. That's the one where the horse tried to kill him. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Can't wait. Nice. Uh, the next one is a random one that's in Midnight Madness. It's called The People's Joker. Cool. Uh, it's a Dave. It's a retelling of the Joker, and it's like uh, about a. You know what? I don't even I don't even know. All I know is it's related to the Joker and I'm in and it looks fucking wacky. An asp aspiring clown grappling with her gender identity combats a fascist fascistic caped crusader in writer director Vera Drew's uproariously subversive queer coming of age story, origin story. Fun. My understanding is they basic she basically remakes like key scenes from Batman movies and Joker. Oh, in a, in a different light. Yeah. In a different light All and right. kind of like suades them a little. It sounds very, very wacky. Yeah. Interesting. And then I, and then I saved the wackiest for the end. Uh-huh. 
is a film called Project Wolf Hunting. Oh. It okay. is Korean. Of course set it is. Car- set on a cargo ship. Sure. And it is about cops that are pinned against ex con or not ex cons, convicts. Right. And basically it's a fucking game of death. And huh. then hilarity ensues. So like and Con really Air but bloody. on a boat? What's that? So like Con Air on a boat? Uh, I would say Con Air meets Battle Royale. Oh, fun. On a boat. On a boat. Yeah, it's supposed to be like buckets and buckets and buckets of blood. Amazing. Sign me, Amazing. Sign me the fuck up. We have that scheduled and the movie starts at fucking 830. I don't think that a. Our or morning, we could... AM. Nice. AM. We're starting our morning with this fucking nice. movie. Yeah, man, that's the best way. You started off with something completely fucked up right in the morning and need a cold yeah. shower afterwards. Just it's a good way to do it. Yeah. Good way to do it. I'm fucking stoked for that one. Dave, you got any quick hits? Um I got The Fablemans, which is yeah. the new Steven Spielberg film. Everyone's really excited about that one. Uh Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, which is the oh, sequel good. to That's Knives back. Out. Nice. I'm very excited about that. Yes. Uh The Whale, which is the new Darren Aronofsky with uh Brendan, Brendan Fraser, Fraser. Yep. Where he plays an overweight teacher trying to reconnect with his daughter. Apparently he's incredible. We're gonna cool. find out more next week because it premieres in Venice. Nice. Um Weird, the Al Yankovic story, yes. which is the Al Yankovic uh, biopic yes. starring Daniel Radcliffe. I love it. I love everything <laughs> about what that project is. <laughs> like, I, how could I? How could I not want to see that? No, you need to. And uh, Tony keeps questioning me on this, but uh, this little film called EO, which is about. It won the jury prize at Cannes, and it's about a, sen- a sentient donkey as he, it experiences the best and worst mankind has to offer. That either sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun or super depressing. I, I don't know, man, but apparently it's incredible, and I need to see All right. this fucking donk gripping new drama about a sentient donkey oh, going well, through I life. I thought you were going to call it a donkey I, show. No. <laughs> well, I got it's a, a feeling- donkey show. I got a feeling that's going to get like uh, very like truffle hunters vibes, which I like. I did like that. Yeah, that one. That one was good. So I'm I'm hope if it's anything like that, then like count me on board. I'm very skeptical about this one, but I'm going to pick that. This is your random horse. You're always we always pick a random horse, me and you. So uh, this is this is the one that you chose. So I'm uh, let's fucking give her nice. Giddy up, bitch. Giddy Giddy the fuck up. But, uh, fucking tiff it's christmas in september house to the yeah but i think that about wraps us up yeah uh hopefully we'll be uh you know lucid next time you talk to us instead of like half asleep well i will be uh, but yeah tony and dave i don't know he, 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 after seeing that in as many movies as they're probably gonna watch a tiff ah it may be a sleeper one. I might be prodding them a bit, like giving them the old poke just to keep them going. We're well, going to keep that back Talking me to get more movies. Tell me more. Well, at least fucking, well, hope to, hopefully, fingers crossed, I might fucking put my fucking foot in my mouth, but hopefully Dave doesn't hit us with like 10 to 15 fucking Sudbury movies after Tiff is Oh, home. yeah. I won't do that. I won't do that. Uh, yeah. Jesus Christ. That maybe was just rough like, Maybe year. just a cup. Maybe just a cup. Yeah. 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 Maybe just a small handful. A few loose ends. Yeah. 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 A yeah. few loose ends. Loose ends that we missed a Tiff. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to overdo it at Sudbury this year. Good. Good. Yeah. Thank yeah. Christ. But, uh, hey, Huzel. yeah, that about wraps us up. Uh, my name is Dave. I'm James. And my name is Vengeance. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. We're sitting in the Zoom and he literally titled his name in the Zoom call as Vengeance. And uh, we appreciate you listening and we'll be uh, talking to you again very, very soon. Heck yeah. Yes, your fucking vengeance. We get it. <laughs> <laughs>